Hello everyone and welcome back to Minecraft 101 where we go over the basics of Minecraft before we get into our survival series here at Great Taz Gaming. So this is episode 4 and uh, we're going to get right into this and episode 4 was basically about creating your world so we're going to start off in bedrock this time since the other three episodes we started off in java there are differences in creating your worlds and how your worlds turn out basically between the two and not only this i'm recording this around halloween 2022 and i just like the backdrop that they actually put on the intro scheme for uh minecraft bedrock now this isn't on minecraft java at all so this is part of the reason i want to look at here also but <clears throat> the first thing you need to know about everything again this is creating your world in minecraft and really it's not really that hard as you open the game, both of them are going to have similar opening screens that you're going to want to do stuff in. And as you can see here, that skeleton head is spewing out lava. Don't go nowhere. <laughs> Anyways, as you can see, I already do have my test test world, which is 1.19 point whatever on, on Bedrock, because it's pretty much auto -like. Once you do major updates like 1.19, it does the automatic updates all by itself um, in the smaller packs. Uh, so basically, you're just gonna come to create a new world. In this new world, uh, uh, this is gonna be one of the differences you're gonna see between Bedrock and Java, and you'll see that when we go to start a world in Java for this episode it might break broken down into two episodes it all depends on how long my episodes end up getting so you can like these are all locked you can buy these these are all like i said a feature that you will see in java and bedrock but you will not see in java so you're gonna click go ahead and click your new world first you're gonna give your world you're gonna see this here you're gonna give a world a name so we're gonna go through we're going to how to create your world and then you can pick between survival which uh, is basically how the majority of everybody plays it and you can pick whether it's or creative creative you can't earn achievements in bedrock as I said before but you can just build to your heart's content never have to worry about anything you'll always have every block you ever need in creative but there's really no survival aspect to the game, per se, um, which is part of what Minecraft is all about. So when we go to make our world, it's going to definitely be in survival. Now, you can pick your difficulties here, um, and it all has dependencies on different things. And you can change this later on in the game, unless you pick Cardcore on Java, which is always locked too hard. So here it tells you this is uh, the new layout on Bedrock is really nice. There's no hostile mobs on Peaceful. Some neutral mobs spawn. Hunger bar doesn't deplete and health replenishes over time. You know, uh, easy hostile mobs do less damage. Uh, you just don't have to worry about um, completely dying. Normal is where it's mostly is. They deal um, na standard damage and the heart really depletes down to half a heart. All right. So you could not die from hunger. In hard, hostile mobs spawn, they deal more damage, and the hunger depletes, depletes. Um, just sitting around long enough, you can die in hardcore mode by not eating. So that's kind of that. Also, um, when you go to do uh, zombie curing or uh, zombie villager curing, and you want to make zombie villagers into zombie villagers this is a 100 percent chance that a villager being attacked by zombie will turn into a zombie villager as where normal is 50 percent it's 10 percent chance and easy and of course in uh peaceful and never will so there's the basic start of your setup now like this is going to be totally different again like i said then uh bedrock and then java so your advanced settings are here um you can put in your own seed if you want or you could just let the game 
come up with it. Now this is not generally the seed it's going to come up with. It's just putting a bunch of numbers in there to show you. Uh, you could take, you could a flat world. You could have a starting map, which gives you a little help. A bonus box, a bonus chest that gives you a few items, and you can show coordinates. I like to have my coordinates on when I make map. Fire spread you can turn off, and that keeps uh, from lightning burning down your buildings and stuff like that, or lava actually burning down your buildings, so you would never have to worry about that. TMB boxes go boom. Uh, that means TMB boxes, box, uh, respawn blocks explode. Uh, you can turn that off, mob loot. Um, you can turn off mobs never drop loot, which would be kind of not the most intelligent thing, especially if you want to go to beat the game, because you need blaze rods, and the only way to get blaze rods are by killing blazes. So if they don't drop loot, you never get blaze rods. So yeah, you can never go to the end. I think there's some other things like you, yeah, you, can't, you just can't go to the end. Um, <laughs> but basically that. Uh, natural generation to life, um, gain or loses hunger based on your hunger so that is goes into you know uh you can die from hunger you can turn this off even in hardcore uh, even in hard on bedrock uh tiles blocks drop when they're broken yes you want if you break a block you definitely want to pick up the block so you want that and then you can immediately spawn respawn immediately and this gives you your simulation distance loads and it applies to within a 64 block radius now this is all depending on your now remember a block is a 16 uh cube area so it's four of those in a row from you uh so it's four out from the player which means it's eight it's a nine by nine area nine by nine area so the bigger you get this uh the higher it is i usually go around eight or nine eight to ten chunks just because uh as you can see here and it tells you this is a 64 by 64 radius 96 by 96 128 160 and this is 192 now java does have this split in between two just like here so we can go over here to multiplayer and this gives um players access anyone you've added a minecraft friend can join well if you want to play solo you want to change this basically to invited players only if you have this on friends of friends so if you have a friend named ted and he doesn't get on and he plays this for a while gets on one of his friends jeff that you hate can get into your world if you put um friends for friends members can this is for uh your multiplayer so they can visit which means they can only observe world can't interact with it a member can actually interact with it and an operator can change things and use commands so generally if you're going to be multiplayer you want this especially if you're going after achievements as you can see there you can make it visible to land players uh so if someone is poking on your local area network just like in java they can join it and players can damage you there you can leave that on too so normally i will do invited players only because i want to be able to say if i want them to come in my realm or onto my world i'll invite them and if i want them to play then yeah Cheats, again, if you add cheats, this automatically turns off advancements, and there's all kinds of cheats that you can put in here. As you can see, you can keep your inventory. Uh, you can turn off mob spawning. You can turn off mob griefing. Uh, entities drop loot. So non-mob entities like paintings drop items when destroyed. So you got your weather cycle. You can do commands, command blocks, education additions, and you can change your random tick speed. Um, and you can make it a normal cycle or always day. We're not going to mess with any of that. We're not going to add any resource pack. We're going to leave it basically the same. So as you can see here, this is what you got your active currently. This is the ones I own right here that I could add in. Nothing there I want. And I can get hundreds of more right from the store. Behavior packs. Change says exactly how it changes the behavior mobs. And we won't have to worry about that. And if you want, if you're going to be playing an experimental uh, mode, if you want to play some of the experimental beta stuff that's coming along, you can just come to the experimental mode and turn it on. You can turn on the spectator mode, holiday features, custom biomes, creating code, and the betas are um, basically the betas for the new stuff that's coming out. And then Mojang features like experimental quarries and language features. You can also turn that on. That's all a bunch of features. So that's really basically creating your world uh, and setting everything up that you really want to do the next thing you really have to do is just go ahead and click that create button and you'll get a loading screen just like this that may give you a little word text like there it says come become a creator on the 
on the marketplace. I'm not good enough to become a creator on the marketplace. And boom, here we are in our new world. As you can see, and, and we're in a dark forest, dark oak forest, or um, as it's called in some, a roofed forest for this world. Now, this world is not going to be the world that we are going to move into when we go and ahead and move into our survival series. But this is just a sample of what we could jump into. And this is kind of funny that I started on top of the uh, dark oak tree here. <laughs> and uh, I've never had actually had this. I, I've always started on the ground. And I guess this is the closest it could get me to the ground and where I need to be. Now, if you notice in the grid coordinates in the upper left-hand corner, right over here, well, I can't really do anything, but you can see that I'm not at 00. zero. I'm at 37,143. Zero, 00 is, oh, let's see, 142 that way. And that way so zero zero is right over there somewhere it might be out in the water and what it does is if you uh start zero zero would be out in the water it will spawn you somewhere nearby so this right here technically is going to be my spawn point so this i would want to to make sure that i know where this is and everything i would probably want to leave this in one some way shape or form so that i know this is a spawn point and probably the easiest way to do that would be just, you know, uh, chop all the bushes down or something like that. But now we're going to go over and try out Java to see how that works. See you in a second. Right back here in Java. Now, before we run over to Java, you do see there are other things. You can do other things with your worlds, like you can go in and edit them. As you can see, this is somewhat similar to what you can do in um, your escape screen. You can change the mode, you can change the difficulty, uh, you can change the multiplayer settings, uh, resource packs and behavior packs right here. You can change what a person is when they come in by just clicking over here you but you can't change anything that would change um any major thing you can change your simulation distance uh your world options you can change all these and you can go into experimental modes right down here you can enable your cheats which automatically turns off achievements again so you can make changes to it you can export your world you can copy your world and you can delete your world now since i'm not going to be playing in this world i'm going to do it but right here is what we're going to be looking at in the future when we go to make the uh, survival guide world we're going to be looking at this and then we're going to be putting it into the java position that makes our seeds so for now we're going to say goodbye to this world because i don't plan on playing it um this was just on how to create your world so here we go we're going to go ahead and delete it forever and as you can see it is gone so now on to java and let's create a world over there and here we are on java edition as you can see it says right here java edition don't worry i'll be happy again you have your options which are right here all right you can go to minecraft realms you can quit this is uh your accessibility your multiplayer your single player this is your language and of course we're going to make a world so we're going to go into single player now again in minecraft java edition you have to open up your single player world to a land for other people to play on it and they can't play from anywhere in the world has where bedrock edition uh, i could have a friend in california who could join me in my uh solo world and play around and we can have fun that is a huge difference to remember when you're playing bedrock that's a parody difference i guess you could say and we'll go over the parody a bunch of parody differences in episode pre-episode five and we'll go over a few of them here or there as we run across them I, I gotta sit down and look at a bunch of parity differences between the two um, and write down a list so that i have some good information for pre-episode five which may take me a little while to get to um there's a lot a lot of parity differences some of the major ones i'll find some of the minor ones won't and i'll have to try and test to figure out some of them so here we go we're going to make a single world as you can see here i have a bunch of different worlds in java they 
when my hard card crashed, I was able to save these, but I was not able to save my bedrock ones, unfortunately. So you can select any of these and it, will, and it will tell you, take you there. Also in Java, the difference between Java and Bedrock, Java, Bedrock will automatically update your worlds. You can't, it's harder to play older versions of Bedrock unless you have a special launcher. So as you can see here, this test world was uh, made in 1.19.2, 1 as where my solo world is 1.18.1. .1. My survivor world is 1.16.4, along with my ALC world three. And then the one block world is 1.15.2. And then the uh, greatest things is 1.16.1. This is, uh, got this from someone uh, just making things. So same thing, you're gonna find the creator world. Um, and then you're gonna put in your name of your world, how to make your world. Now you, hey, here is where you change what type of world it is, whether it's creative, hardcore, or survival. No, and it's all the same. Um, hardcore, again, is survival. It's locked at hard on hard difficulty, and you get one life. This is only available in Java. You can play it in Bedrock through uh, stuff that you can download from the marketplace. Creative, again, unlimited resources, uh, free flying, and blocks destroy instantly if you punch them, uh, but you don't collect them. So there is that. Your cheats are on. You can add data packs, more options, your game rules, and then you can change your difficulty right there. Survival is where we're going to be playing uh, the survival world. So, and we're going to be playing it on hard. Again, you can go peaceful, easy, normal, and hard all over here. You can turn your cheats on and off right here. Uh, in Java, you can still do achieve, not achieve, advancements, even if the cheats are on. So. You can add data packs, which we are not going to do any here. Your game rules. These are basically rules that are in the game, kind of like cheats and stuff. So you can uh, later movement, respawn immediately, require a recipe for crafting. You can deal drowning damage is on, uh, deal fall damage. You can have that fire damage on, freeze damage on. You can turn any of these off. Uh, and keep inventory on death. That's kind of like on bedrock. Uh, you can do that, but you got to have cheats on, I believe. So you can turn that on and off here. You can have your runner generate health. Uh, sleep percentage, a percentage of a players who must be sleeping to skip the night. This can, has to be set now, even if you plan on bringing other people in. So if you want it just where one person, you basically put one, one percent. If you want everybody to have to sleep the past the night, then 100%. But this is all dictating on where uh, your respawn um, radius from your respawn point is going to be 10 and allow spectators to generate terrain. You can do that. Here's your mobs. Uh, you can turn off raids. You can forgive, have forgive dead. Your threshold. Now, this is a parity difference between Bedrock and Java. Uh, there is no such thing as entity cramming on bedrock so i can put 300 mobs not that you would really want to in one cubic space uh, i could put 300 chickens in that space uh, on bedrock on java to help keep from lagging out the system they put a entity cramming into the game and that would be a max of 24. Uh, this is uh, allow destructive mobs mob griefing uh, so Endermen and Creepers, uh, Universal Anger, that means basically if I kill, if I beat up on a Piglin and then you come around, our, it's going to be automatically angry at you also. So another player. Uh, you can turn off Phantoms, turn off Mobs, Pillager Patrols, Wandering Traders you can turn off, and you can turn off Wardens even. That yeah, I don't believe you can do in Bedrock. Drops, you can change your drops here. Uh, your world updates, here you can turn off fire tick turn off the wound random tick speed stuff like that your drop blocks moves mobs dropping loot stuff like that you can turn your announcing advancements on and off command block output this is all a bunch of stuff that you can really don't really need you can just leave it basically on which i do okay you got more world options you can generate turn structures on or you can turn them off so that means basically you can have a world without any structures meaning no villages, no strongholds, 
which you, you really don't want to do that. So <laughs> you want to keep that on. You could change to different types of world and you could change this by at changing to make specialized worlds. Uh, there's also large biomes and then you can change to amplified, which I don't think that works anymore. They were supposed to be removing that. And then a single biome that you can see a lot of Minecrafters go through. And this is how they inspect some of the worlds that you actually see to see some of the stuff like uh, when 118 was coming around and they were doing the, the lush caves. You've seen a lot of people doing that. And then what we're going to be playing is a default and then you import settings and it'll take you outside to go into a, a document to find the actual settings that you already have. Then you get to put, turn your bonus chest on and off or you can just click done, which will bring you back to this one. And then once you have this all done and again, back to the world options, this is where we're going to put the seed number once we build, make the world for the survival guide uh, that we get from bedrock. So we're going to put the number we get from there right in here to create a world also in Java. So, and then you just come right over here and you just go ahead and click. Java takes a little bit longer to actually create the world because it takes, the programming is different and it takes a little bit more resources, um, but it does take a minute or two. So we'll give it, and uh, as you can see here, it's processing and that's what the little image in the center of the screen is all about. And it's 100%, so here we go, and we're joining the world. Let's see what, where you end up. If we end up someplace cool like the last one, on top of a root tree in the root forest. No, we end up in a tundra, and we can know this by, we can hit F3. We are in a overworld. We are in a snowy taiga. So as you can see here, it's a different layout. We are in a snow-filled area, and we got ocean right a uh, frozen ocean right next to us where we're starting so as you can see you can start in actually we're out on a peninsula that goes out into a well maybe nope nope that's the same frozen ocean so as you can see this is where we start in java but this isn't going to be where we start for the survival guide so so don't worry about that. As you can see, this is a little bit leggy. I got a lot of running on my computer right now. And when we go to create some of these videos, uh, I won't be running pretty much anything. I do have to add some mods on here because there's some mods that are going to allow me to help create and build. Uh, and, and like Optifine, I will be using that will help me uh, help the game just run a little bit better on my system. So I have to add all those. I have to download the updates, and that will help us all out. But before we get going, we're going to go ahead and here's our escape menu and we're going to save and quit. Save and quit is going to take us back to the main menu. Now, as I said, there's a way to um, edit these uh, worlds right inside. As if you click on a world in Java, you will get, you can play selected world, you can create it, you'll see you create a new world, you can recreate the selected world, you can delete it or you can edit. If you go into edit, you can reset the icon, you can open the folder, you can make a backup, open the backup file, you can optimize the world, you can export, and you can save or cancel. We're not going to be doing anything and you can even change the name of the world right here too. But since we're not going to really use this world for basically anything, we're going to go ahead and delete and say delete and then we're going to go back to the screen and we're going to say i hope this video was informative on what you can do when creating your world uh, there's a lot of options on both bedrock and java as we went through here in the past 20-ish minutes to show you how to do things and if you like this video please Make sure to click that like button and let everyone know. And if you want to comment, comments help also. If you think I missed anything, please comment down in the comment section below. Uh, not only does it say, hey, I might have missed something, or hey, this was a good video, but it also shows interaction to YouTube and helps um, this possibly get around to more people. 
uh, if you're not subscribed and you do want to keep up to date with the Minecraft 101 Survival Guide and the everything else I do here on the channel, like World of Tanks, uh, game reviews, etc., etc., make sure you click that subscription button. And if you want notifications for all videos that I upload, make sure you click that notification bell, changing it from personalized to all to get all notifications. With all that being said, ladies and gentlemen, this is a great test, and I uh, hope you come back soon. I'm going to get out of here. Have a good one.